Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about more concepts that have to do with developing rhythmic flexibility and ultimately more freedom with your rhythm, which is what we're all looking for. And I still firmly believe this is the best way to get better at improvisation. So much less about the notes and so much more about rhythm. So this video is actually inspired by a question that one of our viewers asked and then a comment on a previous video from one of my friends and a great saxophone player, Andy. So the initial question that was posed that inspired this video was from one of our viewers, Strat1227. And they say, any tips or tricks on how to practice interweaving triplets and 16th notes naturally? I find it hard to switch my feeling for the rhythm to go in between those. And that's a really great question, Strat. That is one of the most difficult things to do, yet something that we all want to be able to do, freely switch between subdivisions. Now that got me thinking about a comment from, again, one of my friends and an awesome saxophone player, Andy, on a previous video from way back. And he said, one way I like to practice creating rhythmic dissonance is by playing bebop heads offset by a half beat. It makes the whole thing sound odd, but it forces our muscle memory to be less dependent on the downbeat, more rhythmic flexibility. And I think Andy is absolutely right on with that way of practicing. You take something familiar and you make it unfamiliar and challenging by doing something to it, ideally rhythmically. And that's something I do in my own practice time. So today we're gonna go over something that I do on a regular basis that's really, really going to help you develop that rhythmic flexibility when it comes to subdivisions. And we're gonna focus on eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and quarter note triplets. So the first thing I wanna do is take one of my favorite melodies, one of my favorite bebop heads, and that is ornithology. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the end of the tune, and we're gonna take this little two bar phrase that happens right at the end of the melody. That is a really classic phrase, it's really recognizable, and we are going to manipulate it, play something really familiar in a bunch of really unfamiliar ways. So here's the phrase how Charlie Parker wrote it in its natural state. <laughs> Great, so now we know what it sounds like. That should sound really familiar to you if you've ever played or heard this tune. All right, so I mentioned that I want to work on some triplet subdivisions. So I'm going to start with quarter note triplets, and I'm simply going to play that same collection of notes, but instead of playing it in eighth notes, I'm going to play all quarter note triplets, and it's going to take something that I know really, really super well, and it's going to really flip it on its head and sound completely different because where the notes line up in the bar, the arpeggiation of these different chords are going to happen at completely different times. And it's going to give me something that I already know under my fingers, but it's going to completely flip it on its head rhythmically. Here's what it sounds like to just play straight up quarter note triplets using that same line. <laughs> Sounds totally different, doesn't it? And now I'm hearing that collection of notes in a completely different way, which is awesome. So I mentioned that the other subdivision I wanted to work on was eighth note triplets. So what if we took the line and we did the exact same thing, but now we made the entire line eighth note triplets? <laughs> Again, a completely different way of playing the line and a completely different conception of playing the line. All the notes are landing in different places, but at the end of the day, it's still the same melodic material. Okay, so now to get to the heart of the question. Now I wanna start mixing up some of these subdivisions of the beat. So now I'm gonna start combining eighth notes, quarter note triplets, and eighth note triplets in a whole bunch of different ways to create a whole bunch of different lines at the end of the day and a whole bunch of different rhythmic schemes where I have to be really flexible. Okay, so in this next line, I'm going from 
eighth notes. The line starts just as it normally does in ornithology. But then when I get to the downbeat of the second measure, I'm going to morph into playing those eighth note triplets. And then I'm going to play two eighth note triplets and end it with two eighth notes and a quarter note. And this is a perfect example of something that you would want to do in your solos. You'd want to be able to play eighth notes, go into eighth note triplets, and then come out of those eighth note triplets back into regular eighth notes. Let's see what this one sounds like. All right, let's flip it again. This time we're still dealing with eighth notes and eighth note triplets, but this time we're going to use the eighth note triplets first for an entire measure, and then we're going to switch into playing an eighth note subdivision and then end with a quarter note. Let's hear what this one sounds like. <laughs> Okay, and in our final example, now what we want to do is mix up all three subdivisions of the beat. So I'm going to have quarter note triplets, eighth notes, and an eighth note triplet. And you can see what I did here in bar one. I started with a quarter note triplet, went into eighth notes, did the same thing in the second measure, and then I'm capping off the line by playing an eighth note triplet. So now I'm getting everything. I'm getting all those subdivisions that I wanted to work on, and I have to go back and forth between all of them. <laughs> Now, what you didn't see here was any 16th note subdivisions, right? But that's okay. We could very, very easily work those in. And I think you can also see that the possibilities with this are endless. I could write 50 lines using these different subdivisions and just freely going back and forth in between them. And if I really was very conscious of the metronome, and really very conscious of my accuracy with the metronome, this would certainly transform the way that I actually improvise, and I would start to feel this incredible rhythmic freedom to go in between all these different subdivisions whenever I want to. And I like doing this with these short little sections of these different tunes, but you could elongate this out to a four bar phrase or even an entire A section of a melody or maybe even an entire melody. But if you're just getting started with this, I suggest doing it on a smaller phrase because at the end of the day, we all just want to throw ourselves completely into the fire. We want to start to work on this stuff, get comfortable with it gradually, and then eventually we'll notice that it'll become easier and easier to do on longer and longer phrases. But I could have plucked any part of this melody it's totally up to you what part you want to play. This is just one of my favorite parts of the melody is this little closing statement. So hopefully that gives you some new ideas that you can use in the practice room. Thank you to Andy and Strat for the incredible inspiration. I love getting inspiration from my viewers and my friends. And these are the things that inspire me to keep doing this. And that's why I always ask you to leave me comments because really it provides me with new video ideas and just keeps the content coming out. So on this video, let me know what you think about this idea. Is this something that you do? Is this something that you'd like to start doing? I love hearing from you and I try to get back to as many comments as I possibly can. If you like this video and you found it useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and turning on that little notification bell so that you never miss a video. And most of all, as usual, I just wanna thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this content. And I hope I've provided you with some value that you can take into the practice room and can benefit you as a musician. See you next time on another video. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.